and I started working for Gary Vee. So that was the yes. big turning point. Yeah, this is the big one now, Gary Vee. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, in my previous life, I was a soccer player, actually, football player, right? So I played professionally. Really? Not many people know that. Yeah, yeah, I played professionally. In- it's too much but by then ai will have taken over so who knows right maybe terminator is like doing the who is the guy behind the carts yeah. <laughs> hi everyone and welcome back to decoded by divers i'm your host dina matar and today we have a serial entrepreneur and my friend marco here to tell us his life story go on Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much for for hosting me. I'm glad we're doing this finally, right? I know. We I'm glad it's in person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I can see you. So, so the first thing is you you picked the coolest spot ever. That's the first Thank important you. thing. I mean, I, guys, we are in a van. I mean, this is insane. <laughs> I told so you, cool. this is the best studio, so no one's allowed to take it. I'm gonna <laughs> say what it's called, where it is. <laughs> you just keep it for you. This is you. ours. <laughs> So I want to know your life story. We were talking about it a few days ago, and then I was like, let's save it for today because I know that I want to hear it for the first time um, on here. So it will be very cool to hear. Awesome. Thank you very much. From the much. beginning. Yeah, uh, from the beginning. That's that's hard and long, but <laughs> I'm going to snap it into smaller pieces, right? Um, look, I originally come from Serbia. My dad is from Montenegro. Mom is from Serbia. Uh, in my previous life, I was a soccer player, actually, football player, right? So I played professionally. Really? Not many people know that. Yeah, yeah. I played professionally? In, yeah. Played in few countries, played for like under 19th uh, national team, etc. But then 10 years ago, I moved to uh, Dubai and, you know, I, I became an entrepreneur, right? It, it, it hooked me and I went into the game, right? So Why the, did you stop playing football? Um, actually, you know what? Um, I, I don't mind saying it was a mix of several reasons. So the easiest one, when I want to explain to someone in one sentence, I always lie. I always <laughs> just say, oh, it was, you know, it was an injury and I stopped, but it wasn't actually. So uh, several events uh, within my family, right, private stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and I kind of got demotivated and I, I was like, uh, you know, uh, opportunity for Dubai came up and I was like, I just, I just uh, went, you know, sideways and that's it. But uh, it was very tough. That was very, very tough because I only knew football back then, right? Nothing else. And then uh, I found something that I like even more that I, I really found myself. So I'm glad f- for that. Yeah. Was it crypto? <laughs> No, <laughs> you know, you know, I'm just just an enthusiast, right? Yeah. But we 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 did meet through uh, several crypto events and and some potential collaborations, right? Yeah. So that's our background, that's right? That's fine. Yeah, Let's yeah. hear it then. What was so much mm. better? Look, so so uh, definitely life in Dubai ten years back. You know, uh, I came I came completely broke, right? I I borrowed two thousand euros and I and I came here, right? So I was so dedicated, and I was crazy enough to to make that move because I was just twenty one, right, mm-hmm. uh, back then. Um, now it's so easy to guess my age, right? Yeah, thirty <laughs> one. Thirty one. Yeah, yeah, thirty one. I'm proud of it. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, still uh, young. So yeah, still young. Um, I have a few more years to go. So yeah, um, borrowed the money came to Dubai and it was really hard, right? Mm-hmm. Because um, parents got divorced. I had to take care of the family, had to take care of my sister who was studying at the time. So I was like kind of paying for everything, etc. So it's really tough on me. And I had to do several jobs. I didn't choose. I did so many different things until I, you know, gathered some money and then I opened my first company. So my, my actual background is marketing, but I didn't start doing marketing like uh, the majority of marketeers and agencies. So I didn't go to school for it or I didn't enjoy the agency. I did it for myself because I opened several businesses and I did marketing for my own businesses before I moved into agency space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, something that shocked you last time when we met was actually that um, how I kind of became good at it uh, because I absolutely sucked in the beginning yeah was that uh, i realized i i have to learn i have the talent but that talent has to turn into something much bigger and i started working for gary v so that was the yes. big turning point yeah this is the big one now gary v yeah yeah exactly this is where I'm but just just to yeah but just to just to clarify so so i wasn't employed by vayner media his company i was just part of the international strategy in mm-hmm. 2000 i don't know 17 18 I, I i forgot when he was really um scaling his brand on social media when he was translating all the content to different languages etc um and i was part of that so i was in touch with his new york team and i was working for them yeah yeah 
and that was really cool but tough though because i had to stay awake like until 3 a.m every of day because of the time but difference. when you're that young it's not that difficult, yeah yeah who it? cares so i'm yeah. so glad i did it I, I've, I've learned a ton he he was uh, really amazing and he still is i mean he's of amazing course. mentor for for everyone globally and how was that experience for you from I like mean, I mean, that, that changed my life when I saw these people, how fast they are just with replying to their emails to overall mindset, right? How do they think it's so outside of the box, etc. So I'm really grateful for that opportunity because that changed my take on marketing and not just Gary Vee, but some amazing people that came to my life also on the way. Mm-hmm. One of them is Tim Kobe. Uh, I met him here uh, through my dear friend, Julie, and uh, he's someone who did many, many stuff for, let's say, uh, he worked with Steve Jobs, right? Yeah. For 11 years. He did everything for Apple last 23 years. And it's insane. So I had those people kind of close to me that I could uh, learn from, right? right? So it was much different. Plus, I was learning from the market because I was spending my own money into my own company, right? Of course. Uh, that's the best way to learn, right? Yeah, it's yeah? the hardest lesson. Because, you know, when you don't succeed, it's a, it's a bit of a pain. But you have obviously done it very, very, very well for yourself. Look, I had my ups and downs, right? Definitely. I mean, uh, uh, the way I, we will talk about it, I guess. Yeah. So on, the, on, the, on, the, on, on the way, I don't want to get you off the, off the topic, but uh, we both had it, right? You, yeah. you just need to, you, you need to fail. And, and actually, the, um, the general opinion about failure should change globally in my in my opinion because mm-hmm. that's like the, mm-hmm. the best thing that can happen to you because you know exactly how not to do something or where not to go right and you can cut yeah. off something right but um the, the the general opinion about failure is so different like you should be ashamed of it this and that right mm-hmm. so once i went through some big failures and you know when i started to to learn how not to care about other people's opinions then my life changed yeah i mean we're also in a in an age where everything is so public social media everyone's following everything and you're also in a you know we're in an industry where not everyone wishes you well really so people are not exactly hoping for your success they're kind of hoping to see you go the other way in a lot of different areas so it is a difficult and um it is a difficult i'd say industry to navigate through especially with failures because let's say hypothetically if a project is launching and they fail they're not going to have a second chance no community is going to be like oh you know we'll give you another chance we lost money with you the first time but this time we you know we really do support you well, I, I, I agree with that Sp- specifically in service business because you, you, you own a PR agency, right? And yeah. I, I have a marketing agency. So if we have, even though they're different type of campaigns, but if we fail, it, it is really bad. They will most probably not come back. Yeah, right? <laughs> they'll, so they'll I, leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah, you should always aim for excellence in, in that case, but it's still, uh, still failure happens. We, we have to admit it. Yeah, I mean... I think it's just a part of the process and you just have to trust the process. So that's just something that people do have to go through to get to the successful part in life. And there's a lot of different ways that that looks like for different people. So that's also a big thing is failure doesn't look the same to everyone. Um, But I think, you know, obviously that's perception. So not everyone needs to take a failure as a failure, you know, maybe just a back step or something like that. But yeah, Again. like a le- like a lesson, right? But that, that was deep. I don't want to add anything. That was actually <laughs> perfect. You nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's also part of being in PR. You know, you have to learn how to <laughs> direct the narrative. Yeah. But um, no, I do agree with you. It is a very, very important part of the process. So what did you think were maybe your biggest challenges? Because obviously, I for, I, for instance, I am one of the you know, I've come from a, I studied it, it's my background, and I did agency life before I, you know, Mm -hmm. started, you know, my own company, so um, for me, it was just kind of like, it made sense, because that was my process, and it just felt like it was the right thing for me, but you did it from, you know, you just started it on your own, no background, what made you think that this was the right step for you, going into this industry, this market? And going into marketing specifically yeah so so definitely the the turning point was um 
So as I said, I had in first few years uh, being in Dubai, and I don't want to confuse people, I did different stuff, right? So right. I own different companies. And I don't want to go into that just because it's going to be so complex because everyone knows me. I, I just do marketing, but I actually I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur a little bit wider <laughs> than that, right? So, But why I decide to go into marketing all the way in is because of these companies that I had before. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I asked myself one day, okay, so what do you do the best right and i was like well i never failed in marketing i always did it right we always had customers right so i was like why don't i just provide this service to other companies and other people plus also at that time uh like i was traveling mm -hmm. a lot uh, just exploring the world from portugal to seychelles you know i was going everywhere and i was like wow this is so cool so which type of a job right or a business would give me an opportunity to have yeah. geographical freedom, right? Yeah. I was like, wow, you know, agency plus, let's be realistic. In, there is no investment technically. If you have good contacts and you close your first few clients, you're mm. in profit already. So, you know, that was like the, these were the first thoughts, how I went into it. But then I, I got completely hooked. It's so interesting. It's by far for me the most interesting uh, thing to have on the plate, right? Mm -hmm. Doing the campaigns, you know, scaling and helping people scale their businesses. And you have an opportunity to work on several things uh, at the same time, uh, which many people think it's like uh, it's, it's a bad thing. But actually, for me, that drives me. I'm creative then. If I'm only doing one thing, I'm not so good then. I yeah, that, that's no, my that. that's my vibe. Yeah, I think that's also part of why I would say like when it comes to agencies and like for me, for example, like I love seeing all these other like agencies. I love seeing the, your success. Like I love seeing how other people are doing and their strategies are all very, you know, some are very similar, some are quite unique. And I think that working with multiple clients for me, for instance, that keeps it interesting because if you're focused yeah. like on one thing consistently, you it, it, it will dry out, right? Because you're not going to be able to get creative with new strategies because you'll have feel you've done them all. But with different, um, especially within Web3, when you're working with so many different, you know, kind of projects and companies, there's always something that you can come up with that's going to be very unique because it forces the creativity because, you know, it's something different for you. Exactly. You can take some bits from previous campaign or, you know, someone else yeah. and implement it and stuff. But I, I think this part, it, it's very hard maybe for, for people seeing this from a side to realize what we are actually talking about. Because <laughs> everyone says, don't do multiple things, you know, just focus on one thing, have a tunnel vision, but it's it's different, right? Um, th this is a little bit different when you, when you talk about, you know, being in creative space. Yeah, I think... No, I do agree. I think it is very difficult to, you know, understand that perspective unless you've experienced it or you've, you know, been somewhat connected in, into it in some, you know, way, shape or form. Yeah. So typically work com a lot of com companies that will go to an agency are always like, oh, are you sure you know you have enough capacity or are you sure that you'll be able to, to do this? Have you done something similar before? Because but the issue is, is like, even if we haven't, we have the experience and the know how to be able to navigate, you know, and I think that's something that obviously if someone's coming to pay for a service, they want to make sure that their money is well spent and they're getting their value worth. So and look, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that, right? That's part of like business development or let's just call yeah. it sales that we have to do to convince someone to work with you. You have to take them through the process and very important, you have to help them visualize where do they want to be and then break down the steps mm -hmm. and explain them. But that, that credibility part is very important. Yeah. Have you been there and done that, right? So yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, but look, the, the clients who, number one, have the money right mm -hmm. and who then number two understand that they have to have the mindset of hey i need to spend money on this because it's an investment not a not a cost right yeah these exactly. are the best clients right yeah these are the best clients because they just know they have to go into it they have to you know jump and then if the parachute opens it opens <laughs> right yeah yeah i mean i think i like what i like about working work somewhat collaborating with you is that we work so it's like very it complements each other like every the things that we do is very is very like works really well together and i love hearing about like your different strategies so maybe if you want to maybe talk about or share if you can i know when we discussed it last time you mentioned quite a few figures that were really impressive and i was really surprised and i was like well how does that work 
when with some of your campaigns i'm not yeah. gonna, I'm, I'm just speaking broad because i, I, I see you know <laughs> let you get into it because yeah, yeah thank you no thank you you're putting me on the on the spot but <laughs> you did it in a such a good way <laughs> she is she's yeah she's she's very good thank you okay awesome. yeah no look yeah i mean um you okay let me just give a tiny bit of a background before we go into something that can actually uh, give value right uh, to, to hopefully someone so uh someone who i find really smart and like a mentor is chris du right so mm -hmm. he is is uh, he's very famous spe specifically in us but also worldwide right and he's obviously into marketing and design and experience and branding and a lot of stuff so he said at one of the conferences he said if you are really good at marketing why the hell would you always help other people right and when i heard this it was like a light bulb for me i was like wow that's so true since then our strategy completely changed i was like okay we now have three pillars how do we work with someone pillar number one is the vibe great if the vibe if we have a vibe check then we can move to number two mm -hmm. and that is do we believe in a product or a service we have to market right mm -hmm. and then the number three is the finances right and honestly that's the easy part then because if we crossed a lot of these stuff and steps then we will never ever lose a potential client because of money only yeah so that that was the thing and we came in a situation where we don't have to do outbound marketing and we just have inbound leads people want to work with us and thank god for that and i hope it's going to stay like that so number one is we can choose the clients right and then the num number two that allows us to have space to work on our own projects mm -hmm. that's coming back to what chris do said open your own sub companies under our agency right or develop products or digital products and since then we are testing this for last three years so we came to um, three years i feel like when you've been doing it for three years you're more like it's already actioned it's not so much testing anymore yeah 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 no i mean <laughs> we are heavily into this um uh, into this mindset as an agency right so mm -hmm. let's say we so if the agency is on the top right under the agency we have um our own sub companies right yeah and this is what we spoke about the other day right yeah. so some of them really escalated and we found uh, uh, an industry uh, and a niche and that is at the tech space right so we like dealing with anything digital digital products meaning online courses is it um, online coaching or is it some subscription models whatever it is mm -hmm. right that is like super scalable um, and global so um, we, we went heavily into that and we create after, you know, three years of testing and trial and error and, 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 and really uh, p pushing hard into that and developing a team. That's also very important. We came to a conclusion where uh, we kind of have a blueprint now that that really works, you know, and I'm, I'm going to add some spice to it. So uh, when a platform or a personal brand who is selling something online, uh, when they when they come to us, there is several ways how they can work with us right we can uh, either um uh, take a retainer right mm -hmm. so they pay us a retainer that's number one number two we can take a percentage of their company or number three we can invest in them right these are the three options um and they always have same issues number one is they don't have a good offer they have one offer and they think it's good because it's selling right but actually you have to have like a main offer high ticket offer and then down sales mm -hmm. right that's very important um the second thing that that uh, they don't usually have in place are the overall funnels so let's say you have a channel like email marketing right so you don't have your funnels in place and then you have your ads then over there you don't you have your funnels in place yeah. etc then the overall organic content and that's very important I'm, I'm i'm sure you've seen this trend with TikTok, with reels and everything algorithm is so healthy so good now it's like uh, adjusted to non-followers so that's amazing if people realize what you can do if you publish like eight videos a day but with the right structure with the right hook with the right you know uh, problem solution cta etc yeah. you can really fly you can really escalate your brand right you can get a lot of sales so that so that's one part of it and then the third part that usually our clients partners have issues with is sales right because you can't really let's say sell a high ticket offer that is twenty thousand dollars no one will go on a landing page and buy it they will uh, leave their info so you can call them so you need either in-house or outsource sales teams so we help with all of that we are like a one-stop shop for their issues online and um what you were talking about numbers right uh with 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 uh I'm risking here, but I don't have an NDA, so I can say. So let's say with with some 
partners that we have, we escalated to up to that we make ten thousand dollars a day, which is which is which is pretty amazing. Um, by using all this stuff that and I previously mentioned in in the last few minutes, yeah, yeah, and these are like mainly. Do you feel with subscription model? Um, these are these are n- no, they're they're not subscription uh, for this specific case. So as I said, uh, these are sets of online courses and programs with main offer, high ticket downsells, right? Mm-hmm. In other words, let's say you are a customer, you come to our funnel, you'll buy something for sure. You know what I mean? But uh, the, the the first thing that is non-negotiable, the products that we are selling, these courses, they give value, they're amazing, and there is credibility. I mean, this company actually exists for 15 years. Yeah. We just started working with them because they needed, you know, they needed to digitalize their things. Yeah. yeah. And I think that makes sense in terms of that, that industry specifically, yeah. where that's going to be very successful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know what? This is so small. I, I already see an opportunity to double down on that, mm-hmm. right? Because it's so scalable. But we'll talk about that after this. Please, yeah. We have so that I can get more of that. But um, I want to hear about your Web3 awesome. experience and your Web3 life because obviously this is how we met. And yeah. we I think we met over a year ago now. Has it been over a year? Uh, don't I was, ask I was me. I'm so bad with this. I we met. We were talking about one of the companies that you're working with. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. And that I'm a shareholder in that company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Of course. So that's mm-hmm. something I wanted to ask you about, um, if that's something that you do want to talk about. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> so, so, so look, the, again, disclaimer, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not a crypto expert, but I'm an enthusiast and I wanted to go into the space. I absolutely love the technology behind it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted to be part of it. A great opportunity came up, right? We have set up the company, we had a good team and, uh, you know, things killed pretty quickly. We became profitable and then we started, right? Okay, we need PR. We need someone to help us, right? We started mingling around Dubai and we bumped into you and I'm so glad we did. Uh, but yeah, uh, to come back to the actual question, what do I think about uh, overall uh, Web3 space and, and, and the community, etc.? cetera? Um, I think, as, as you always say, that's the crucial part right mm-hmm. is the community you can't make a mistake there even in under in other industries but specifically in web3 wow uh, right <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah you, you can't. i remember our conversation yeah yeah, the, yeah. W- what i was telling you but yeah no 100 percent. and people people don't understand that sometimes the, w- the inexperienced web3 people would you consider yourself a traditional agency or like a make like web because w- i would say we're web3 but we also do a lot of web2 to web3 bridging well well in in that case spe- especially comparing with you we would be web3 definitely web2 not not web3 web so, yeah. so a lot of like see as so you're a good example as well so a lot of traditional companies are still like agency wise they are now coming into the web3 space mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and they are not do, they, they're doing a great job because obviously they have a very strong and this is going to be a problem for the web3 agencies that are focused on only web3 yeah. because now this is a really good time for these traditional agencies to now start coming into the to the web3 space and i think that's going to be a big turnaround point because right now what we're doing us for instance we're working with a lot of major companies um, that are coming into the web3 space and because we're in a position to do that very well for them and we've done that and been successful with it again what like you said credibility they people want to see that it's been done um so i think that it's not we're not in a market where i don't like i don't see the market coming down so it it, but it is very difficult to say because with a lot of people that we speak to like big companies and you know the c-level teams when they're in that position obviously they have much bigger teams than than i would for instance like than in my company and i'm going off topic i've forgotten what i was saying now (laughs) that's completely fine (laughs) but um but what i wanted to say was they a lot of them are very it's we're getting like a 50 50 where some of them are skeptical and some of them believe the market's going to come back like flying soon so right. so it's like a very difficult thing, but I'm not a trader, so I wouldn't really be able to read that. But you, which brings me to this point, you work with um, that with a company that you're share, a shareholder in with a very, very good trader. Um, and the company was called 100X. Correct, yeah. So I wanted to know, do you have any insight? I know you're not yourself, you've given the disclaimer. Yeah. But <laughs> have you heard anything or like what would your input be on that? 
Look, related to the trading, uh, just literally one sentence. I, I, I know the team is doing really good, right? Related to that. But on the on the other hand, I want to I wanna mention something that is really important that can keep, okay, maybe not an agency, but many companies that want to enter the Web3 space or are already in it is the education part of it again, right? Mm -hmm. So just, just as an example, just look what's happening with AI overall, right? Such a big hype, etc. And AI is here right and then education is here and we we had this in the history i was i was mentioning this yeah. right we had an example where and i was talking uh, about this in in, in 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 the arena in belgrade when i was at the conference so you have a situation where um so many people are not educated and they don't know what's going on right and i think this is where the opportunity lays right mm -hmm. uh, because um, overall technology and and, and people right the, the, the education part. So again, technology and education should go hand in hand in this race, right? Right. But we have technology going here, AI or Web3 or something, and we are still here, right? The majority, you are, you're not here. Maybe you are up, but you're an early adopter. You're a minor piece of it, right? So I think that's the crucial part um, where also the, the business opportunity lays, really. And you know what? It's so impactful and uh, plus you can feel great right because you helped someone move forward right yeah. so that's that's how i see the web3 space and why i entered in it is from that perspective mm -hmm. educating people right because i saw how big impact it had on me and i was like okay cool everyone should know about this what's going on not just as from a perspective of making money through trading or something like that right yeah. even though many people are honestly yeah. but also trading is, is is very risky you have to do it in the right way so i'm glad how the team is doing it and how did they set it up right always mm -hmm. focusing on hey you know uh, there is there are big risks don't over risk don't yeah, over leverage yeah. it etc I mean, the usual the usual stories right you you know you've been into crypto space right you know what's what people are doing you know pumping and dumping trade, yeah no but nah, you heard the stories right and you see it yeah well trading the thing is i've tried it not good at it it's not for me yeah, <laughs> lost too much money like trying to even understand it yeah. but there are there are people who understand it like they where they can read at the charts and they actually understand what this means and this means that this is going to happen and I, I do work with people who are very good at it um from in the team and i just i won't touch it because the thing is it's not worth the risk for me that's you know that's that's the bottom line for everyone is it worth the risk for you maybe maybe not but um for me now education is is a lot it takes a lot longer to be able to educate than it does to build the tech because people who know how to build the tech are not going to be in this they're not going to be able to teach someone mm -hmm. You're, we're talking like people who are building these ai products and understanding it they're never going to be able to explain it to us in a way that's going to be very easy to understand so this is again where we kind of come in i would say us is with the educational side from our end especially in a market like this where no one's really buying but people are wanting to learn this is where we start pushing out the educational side of things like the content that's going to help you understand things we work with a few clients that you know they do have like a very easy to understand product and very easy to bridge from web 2 to web 3 so people who are interested and are a bit skeptical and a bit worried it's you know our job is to lay it out for them and i think that's what the market lacks and i've do i've discussed this a few times before um and mentioned and, and it has come up a lot that the one main thing the industry is lacking is the education so like we were talking about with obviously the markets like going down and i think it's all coming to like the lack of education so like you said it's too it's too vulnerable and I think that's because no one understands. I, I don't understand the trading side of things. I don't think mm -hmm. I could because mm -hmm. there's it's it is too complex for me to 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 learn. And I think something like that people can either learn it or they can't and I'm one who can't. But for me, I can understand how to if someone was to explain what something means specifically, I can then portray that into a lesson and push that out for an audience that would want to learn about it. I get you, but l look at this perspective. You can um, try, mm -hmm. right, to learn trading. Uh, you can fail or not, right? These are these, th that's all optional, right? right? You can do it as a side thing. But you mentioned AI, right? What about that? I think related to AI, you don't have to be an AI engineer, right? But I think everyone, uh, even our moms, right? Everyone should educate themselves about AI. 
mm -hmm. what's going to happen and how is it impacting the world. So let me tell you a story. I will, I'm extremely lucky and grateful to know the minister of AI here in, in Dubai, in UAE, right? Mm -hmm. So he said one great thing. He said, um, you know, because AI is so pushed forward uh, compared to us and the education. Mm -hmm. And then I was just thinking in the info what he said. He said, uh, look, we already have autonomous cars. We don't need drivers, right? It's much safer to do that. And he said, if the government of US, right, just allows um, that, okay, now we just use autonomous cars, 3 million people will lo lose their jobs today, right? The bus drivers, the taxi drivers, etc. But you cannot do that. So regulation is very important here, right? Yeah. So, uh, that, so that's that's one thing. And the second thing related to, to education overall and having an opportunity to uh, impact the world, but also make money. Let's let's be fair, right? Mm -hmm. If you wanna enter the ad tech space, is it's it's a, it's a beautiful industry and very different from any other industry. Let me tell you why. Because competitors are welcome. Let me give you an example. What I mean, if you buy one book on sales or one course right you'll buy three more right because you are being in an educational space you're in personal development space right mm -hmm. so competitors are welcome they're actually educating your market to buy products online to you know take the stuff that this is okay right it's because uh, let's face it i mean universities and stuff they, they're so outdated i i have all the respect for it, etc. But it's so outdated. If I just see, yeah. I don't know, marketing or something, right? The stuff we do, like they came out yesterday, right? Yeah. Google updated yeah. something and it, things changed. You don't learn this in the school. That's right? true. No, so. I do agree. With, with universities, I do agree. The only thing it will ever give you is the basics. That's the main thing that you can actually learn from them is the basics. But until AI is comes into play, and you are right. I mean, if AI comes into play, I think the one thing despite the driver side of things because that's something that's I don't even know how to talk about that one because okay. that just feels like a whole other um, session but with AI coming into play if people books are outdated that's one thing also I think books printing a book is irrelevant now because the, whatever's pr whatever you print next week is not going to be relevant that week right if you're going into print tomorrow it's not going to be worth anything when you get when that comes out and I think that's something that a lot of universities i think the uae is one of the ma first countries i think that's going to be the ones to implement something like this i've heard it somewhere i could be wrong but they are looking at making it a lot more it, everything will be more digital so that everything is more up to date but again this could be i could be misinformed so i think once that starts coming like once that starts there will be a very it, it won't be an important anymore who's in Harvard or who's where, right? Because that's not going to be the new, I mean, like, it's still quite a big deal. But I don't think with what you're learning there versus what you're going to learn from um, current events, I don't know how that will come into play in the future. But for us at the moment, it's hard to even say what's relevant now. Yeah. Ne look, next uh, 10 years, uh, when you see univer universities specifically, um, it's... It it's very interesting, honestly, and, and exciting because mm -hmm. you've never had this trend before. Now everyone will have an opportunity to have the right information, right? Mm -hmm. And so many people before didn't have because they couldn't afford, right? Not, not everyone can go to I know, Harvard, or yeah. whatever, as you said. But still, I think uh, big brands like Harvard, like Stanford, etc. I think they will still... Uh, people will still go there and they of should course. go there because that's networking, right? You, yeah. you want to go there for many other reasons, not just the actual education, right? And still you have awesome people who are there, who are lecturers, etc., right? So I don't want to be like, you know, I'm saying bad stuff yeah, about yeah, no, universities, Yeah, I don't, I don't mean right? anything negative. I, I would have never... Uh, Right. Yeah. And, and uh, I support that. I, I always joke. I always say I, I want my doctor who is, you know, uh, yeah. making operation on me. Uh, Harvard to, to, Medical to, School, please. Please, yes. yeah. <laughs> please tell I'm me joking. you're from there. Again, because of the information that we are mentioning, right, that is available now. I know kids, right, who are like 15, whatever, teenagers, 17. They're making five, ten thousand dollars a month. Right. Just by video editing. Three years ago, you didn't have this. This is yeah. what I'm talking about. So things are changing. Trends are changing. Everyone has an opportunity, right? Yeah. Just to add up to that. So it's really about, you know, what's what's your path? What do you want to do? Which direction you want to go through? So many changes. Like big disruption is happening. I uh, know. It's very, it's very hard to picture what 
the world because the thing is if you look at education as we just yeah. did the evolution of that from like when my parents went to school the way they researched oh books libraries you know things like that um yeah. everything was handwritten everything like any essays any things like that everything was just written our our time is was you know google we researched we you know we wrote our essays everything was online now right. I don't know what the future is going to be, right? Because now AI can write your essay. Chat GPT, if right. you know how to use it properly, yeah. it can write your entire essay. Obviously, you'll have to edit it to add the help human element. And now you can actually see if something was written by Chat GPT. But exactly. So now if you learn and if you understand it, that you have to give uh, to the AI tools like Chat GPT, if you give them yeah. great prompts, yeah, he, he can do 85% of your job, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in some cases, which is amazing. But what I want to mention is, you, you, you know what's very important? important now nowadays even for you for me for for everyone else right and what platforms and people are competing for attention that's mm. the hottest topic right now attention right how to grab the attention because everything is so short you only have a few seconds to grab someone everyone is loud on different platforms etc so i think that's the hottest topic right now to find a platform and find a way how you can in the easiest way possible grab the attention right how you can yeah. put minimum efforts but get the maximum return out of it that's very true I think that's a very, very good point. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think that when it comes to even, I think even with graphics and stuff, now AI can do that also. I think we're coming to a point because there's like thousands of AI products and, you know, that, that can do most people's jobs. But if you know how to use it, you're safe. That's what they're saying now, right? So it is very, very difficult um, I think to anticipate what, what that will look like later down the line, but like you said, with attention, which ChatGPT has the most attention at the moment, but soon, what, what will be next, right? And then... Yeah, I mean, look, uh, the way I see the, the, the whole AI perspective to kind of, you know, c close it down, right? To, to yeah, give yeah. my ge general opinion on it is, I know so many people are scared, but I really see it positively, and I'm really relying on on governments, especially you know the four biggest you know um, uh, countries in the world that are kind of leading that. And UAE is one of them, by mm -hmm. the way. Even though they're competing with China, with US, etc., we have so much more people, etc. But they are uh, top five that leading countries for me. AI. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, and, and and that that's legit. I've heard it in the office, right? Uh, when I was there in the ministry. So. Um, Overall, what's what's important is um, I really hope um, so many stupid jobs that we have right now that are so physically hard, right? Uh, I hope these jobs will, will be replaced and where we have new jobs that are much better for the overall uh, humans, right? So us as species, right? So I, I really hope AI will replace those stuff and we will just navigate through it uh, properly. That's that's my two cents on that. How do I see it? Rather than just being scared of it. It's happening, man. So there's no way back. I know. I think, yeah. And I've, ta I've talked about, a l I've talked about AI to a, a lot of people before as well on, on Decoded. And we talk about different parts of it and um, I don't want to keep going into the same thing over and over again, yeah, but yeah. the but there is obviously there's always evil that comes with the good, right? So, no matter how much it's regulated, people are very very good at, you know, if if you want to be concealed or if you, people with AI specifically as well, it can be used for horrible things, like right? It can, people can really, and that's just depending on obviously the person. So it is very difficult because I think it's such a powerful tool that we don't actually know how far and even elon musk was afraid right so that's that's why i'm saying if he's afraid like i'm afraid so it, it is going to be very very difficult to to anticipate the level of what it can do i don't even have a clue what it will eventually be able to do people are guessing terminator vibes people are <laughs> guessing some i don't know so it will it, it is a terrifying thing to think of the bad but a very exciting thing to think of the good but obviously you can't have one without the other so I'm trying I'm very to be positive, Dina. I Come know, but I'm conflicted. I know. Well, we'll we can we'll, we can talk about something that's not AI because now my head's going in that yeah. whole like rabbit hole of what will happen. You know, <laughs> I don't watch YouTubers mm -hmm. though per se, so I can't really judge the content. However, um, I think it's. I feel a but there. there I'm going to use however definitely. instead of saying okay. but. So however. Um, 
I don't know. I, I, I don't want to say... S- uh, I don't really... Say what's on your mind. Come on, be brave. I just think they're full of shit. <laughs> it's not, not like... I think that's, <laughs> that's like most... I can't say most YouTubers because I'm I don't watch a lot of them. I don't watch any to be honest. I watch the ones that we'll work with from time to time just to see the content and see the vibe. But fuck, I should have just used however. However, I don't think that all of them are trust trustworthy. Yeah. With the content because obviously, if people are paying for content, they're paid to put out the content. Doesn't mean that they believe it. If you have your own community, it's like, what are you trying to get them to believe here? If you're vested in the project and you're actually interested and you do value what you're putting out, that's one thing. But if you're someone who's going to say, I really like it, but I'm not going to do it unless you pay me, that's also like a bit like, I guess it is, you're well within your right to ask for it, but it's also stupid. Right. Especially in your, in your space. Yeah. YouTubers oh yeah. in your space. I forgot we're not in the same space. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what are they like in your space? <laughs> I mean, well, there are really legitimate ones, right? And there is a reason why they're successful. Probably because they are great communicators. They can articulate. They're very consistent because this success, especially in YouTube, doesn't happen over the night, right? Mm. You really need to uh, be bang on, right? So, yeah, I consume them from time to time. Well, the people I consume, I mean, their content... Um, I can't call them YouTubers, but they have their channels. You know, they're pretty big. I'm just going to name a few. Uh, Alex Hormozzi, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you use his content? Do you? I'm not. You a, I don't follow many mm. YouTube. Okay. People. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Like he has like a podcast, but he is going on to a bunch of podcasts as well. And he has mm-hmm. this 10 to 15 minute clips uh, related to entrepreneurship. You should follow him on Instagram. My God, like the, the, the amount of value this guy's dropping is insane. He's like the hottest now at the, at the market. The correctly. hottest? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god why, why are you doing this thing? come on <laughs> um no okay so i will look i'm not the thing but this is traditional like for your web 2 i guess industry no 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 no. it's really it's really general you as a business owner you should definitely follow him you know? okay yeah, it's, it's really amazing sure i will do that yeah he really he really nailed the narrative overall right mm-hmm. how to put a ton of value and all of that into into the short form. Send it to me. Send me the I page. Will. I will. I Just because I've already forgotten the name. <laughs> I know it was Alex something, yeah, but yeah, that's Alex okay. Hormozzi. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, yeah. It. Easy. Um, YouTube influencers in Web three, or just all overall any influencers in Web three, they've had their time in like I think it was twenty twenty one when their content was valuable. So obviously people have they were riding that wave and into this market of where it's you know not that no one really wants it anymore or people some people still will there there has to be value to to there has to be a mutual gain here when it comes to companies working with influencers because initially it was just the company pays the influencers they read they read the website on a video or they post some random facts on twitter right and then unless the influencer is actually really working with the project and they are invested or they are, you know, they're vested with the project where they are believers or supporters, mm-hmm. then that's one thing. But people who are going to try to exploit for as much money as they can get just to reach their audience, that's another thing. So I'm not, we do work with a few influencers. The ones that we work with are very good and I will stick by that. I'll stand by it. Mm-hmm. But there are a lot of influencers that we have spoken to in the past and have reached out to where they just try to like ask for ridiculous amounts of money and all these amount of tokens, which are not, you know, which are liquid at launch and because they just want to, you know, they want to rug, they want to just dump the token. And that's for me, that's where it's like that. There's full of shit because why are you going to post something to your audience and then dump the token? That's such a short term thinking, right? I yeah. Mean, I, 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 d- I don't, judge them but i'm definitely against it right specifically in 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 web3 it's crazy as you said they had their run in 2021 right 
and they were just accepting anything left and right. Everyone knew if you're just a little bit in the space, you know, this some of the projects are really not legit. You can yes. just smell the scam, right? Yeah. But they, they did it, and I understand easy money. Yeah, right? and in That's a bull run, in a bull run, companies were easy. It was easy for them to afford that. They would pay like, re- like for, like I don't know. I'm not gonna say names of some. Some of these YouTubers are forty thousand dollars a video. Right. I've never met an influencer that charges $40,000 right. for and a do, video. And look, they do multiple right uh, things on the way. It's not just one project, one video, this and that. So in one year, they can make, you know, life-changing money. And of yeah, course, in, like a, in a month, if they really committed yeah. to, like, just doing it, like, depending on obviously what would, again, perception, what's life-changing money. But correct, it's, it is very much, a ver- it's just very easy money for them to make because they're just sitting there, they're going to, because they've grown their audience and, they also make money on YouTube, right? Because YouTube pays them for the v- amount of views that they're getting, ads running, whatever it may be. They're getting money for that. You see, but coming back, let's say, again, to MySpace and YouTubers, mm-hmm. right, or influencers, etc. It's it's very different. We are really much more brand cautious over there, right? Yeah. But we are as well from our side. I know the industry overall isn't. Yeah. But from our, s- from our end, we do really focus on our due diligence and we make sure that there is... A mutual gain here and mutual mm-hmm. value is provided so they're not just doing one thing like they genuinely have to be interested mm-hmm. so they we have that relationship built so if they don't like something they will say no and that's good enough for me as long as you're gonna see you can say no to something you're not interested in and you're not gonna just say yes for the money right that's that's value in my eyes because it's like you could have said yes because they would have willing to pay mm-hmm. but instead you said this isn't something that you would be something that you would genuinely follow, then that's fine. Honesty is respected. Thank you for inviting me. I absolutely enjoyed it. It was great to, to, to catch up. And thank you, Marco, for joining us. Mm-hmm.